Oh well, guys, he's sitting here. I uh, know it's been a while. Uh, I've uh, took I took a short break after the Duelist Cup in Malaysia, and now I'm coming back with a deck profile. Uh, you guys already know our uh, post ban list uh, with totally awesome being banned. Now we have the now tournaments with Ichizu is uh, taken the crown. Yeah, and this sort of like a updated version for my previous tournaments deck profile. The one is with Brenda Fusion, but now uh, it was just like pure Ichizu and uh, tier, tier elements cards. Uh, first thing first, I think this deck is uh, rather complicated. There's a lot of effects you have to keep in mind. If you just pick up this deck, uh, you will have to go through like a learning curve, I would say. To slowly like uh, master all those tiny details so that you made a better decisions every time you resolve uh, these effects. I will assume you guys do know like uh, some of the effects because uh, I will not go through like every line of text because uh, else this video is going to be super long. Yeah, by the time I record this video, uh, it's just like one week away from the release of the next booster the dark wing blast uh, who knows the meta is going to shift again but nevertheless this is still a disgustingly powerful dex not gonna lie with the ishizu archetype brought to another level in in Yu-Gi-Oh. you will know how broken it is once you pick it up yeah i've been uh, playtesting with this deck for a few weeks after the band list drops previously i was playing spike and uh it's still a very good deck right now. So without further ado, let's get started with the deck profile. Uh, starting off with the Ishiju cards. For the Ishiju monster, I'm playing at max copy. 3 Killback, 3 Agido, 3 uh, Kaldo, and 3 Mudora. Yeah, it took me some time to uh, memorize all their names. You can also call them by their object name. This the Vanguard, this Sentry, Statue, and Oracle. So back to the effects. First off, Kelbeck and Agido. When they are being sent from the hand or deck to the grave by any ways, including the cards of a cards like Twin Twister, you discard it from the hand, you can also trigger it uh, over the new chain. Uh, when the effect resolves uh, each of the player mill 5, this is often how you get your engine start going. And then you snowball like you mill 5 from Kelbeck and then you trigger Agido and then you mill another 5 with a total of 10. Uh, you can do a lot of things with a single mill. So this is why this deck is broken. And uh, the milling effects come with a extra effects that uh, after the milling if uh, you have the exchange of the spirit in your grave uh, you get a mill another 5 cards from uh, either player's deck. Up to your choice. Kelbeck wise, uh, you get to set a traps from your grave to the field. And on top of that, uh, they have a effects where they can special summon themselves from the hand. Uh, Kelbeck is when your opponents uh, special summon a monster. So you can target the monster, special, special summon itself, and then bounce the monster back to the hand. While Agido is that uh, if your opponents uh, send a card from their hand or deck to the grave by any means. Which means even if they like discarding an Ash Blossom over a new chain, you can trigger trigger Agido's effects to specimen itself and also Ishiju Monster, which is either uh, either one of these from your grave to the field, which brings you another monster. Alright, enough talking for these two. Let's uh, hang over to these two right here. Uh, these two has a quick effect where when they are in the grave or field. You can banish itself and also target up to 3 cards from either player's graveyard and shuffle it back to the deck. You know what does that mean? It means DD Crow on crack. You can treat it as a pot of avarice as well because you recycle anything from your grave back to the deck. It's just too broken. These, these two cards right here single handedly just shut down a lot of uh, grave centric decks like Sky Tricle, Orcus, Mysterion. The frog engine and also tournaments, which is why I'm playing at three copies each. And then they also get to spare some of themselves from the hand as well. But uh, you have to discard a earth fairy from your hand and then get a spare summon. And then after spare summon, uh, 
statue gets to search off a card that states action of the spirit on their text. While Oracle directly plays the Grif Creeper's traps face up from your deck to the field. So just by reading all their attacks, uh, I think you can roughly imagine how broken this engine is. Not to mention they are all level 4 which means uh, it enables uh, rank 4 plays. Uh, this is what brought the tournaments to the next level. So by the way, they are all fairy types. That's why we can play uh, Herod of the Orange Light and also to Diviner. Alright, I'll start with the Herald of the Orange Light. It just requires you to send off itself and also a Fire Monster. So if you ever send off uh, any of these uh, on top of negating your opponent's monster effects, you on the, over the new chain link, you can start to mill and, and start to comboing off uh, even at your opponent's turn. And Diviner wise, uh, such a great card because upon normal, especially it gets to mill a Fire Monster from your deck or extra deck to the grave. So you can mill either of these or even the Antis from extra deck to pop a card. And most importantly, it is a tuner. Oftentimes, you, you mill off a level 4 issue monster and then it increases level by 4, which means it's 6. And then, with any of the level 4s, you can synchro into Barnard the Flu, which is another broken card. And the reason I'm only playing at 2 because it's bad during a multiple copy of it. Not to mention, I'm playing other noble summon like the Rhino Heart. It's okay if you don't draw it because uh, throughout milling, if you happen to mill off uh, Diviner, you can special summon it through Spike Elf. Yeah, that's it for the Fairy Monster. Uh, Alright, for the Terrorman's card, uh, firstly, to Rhino Heart, Primeru. Three Hophonis and three Shailene. Alright, the uh, Terramans monster uh, maxing all out except for Rhino Heart to increase the chance of uh, of triggering their effects on your opponent's turn. When you start to kick off from Hophonis or two of these, more often than not, you are always like over mill. You have like multiple Terramans in your grave, and uh, it's not always necessary to activate all of their effects. Uh, in the case when you overmill, it's okay, just leave it in your grave and then with the field spell, you can like shuffle it back Chairman's monster in your grave with uh, Mudora or Keldo to trigger off the field spell effects to pop a card. And then lastly, uh, one copy of Shadow Beast because why not? Just play a single copy of it uh, to increase the consistency. Uh, if you mill it, you can just call it that else you just go to the usual like the Predaplank Draco Stipulia. So one copy is enough. And then Triple Ash Blossom. Uh, previously I was playing Maxi but I after a few rounds of testing, I found out many people can play around Maxi or always have a hard time to resolve. But Maxi is still a great card, don't get me wrong. It could single-handedly like stop my opponent from comboing off for a turn if they don't have an answer for it. But Ash in my opinion is like far more generic and powerful to be able to stop cards like Shadow Fusion, uh, the card looks greener, uh, Splat Star, it's, and it's a better card to draw going first or second and you don't mind have to have like multiple copy on your hand. So that's why I opt to play Ash instead of Maxi as of now. And then for the spell, I'm playing one triple tactic, one terraforming, one foolish burial, two cobai, and triple chairman's fifth spell. Triple tactics, uh, there is also a generic card because uh, there's a tons of Ichiju tournaments in the format right now, so this always. This most likely to go through. Even going first, you start milling something and you helps your opponent to trigger off some of their effects and, and let that be and you can activate your triple tactics. But one downside of this card is that uh, this doesn't break through spike bots with the broken sword. So I think this is kind of like a flex spot for you guys to like change to whatever cards you, you want. Then terraforming to fetch off the fist spell because it's just too good. Foolish Burial to selectively foolish any cards is also very powerful. And then call by yeah because this deck's kinda loses to cards like DD Crow, Damage Shifter, or sometime Maxi. It's just great to have it in your deck to have that assurance. And then the field spell, you know what it does. It searches, it pops and also it uh, 
it grants your monster with 500 attacks which is broken and then the last two card was the gravekeeper's trap and also tyrman's counter trap uh counter trap over the over selic or meta noise because it's a uh, more generic in a sense because this deck kind of loses to some broad breaking spells or traps like triple tactics evenly match and one implication is that you can shuffle back Carlos, which your opponents will tend to ghost cherry it and then upon resolution you just need to send a monster from your hand to the grave so if you send any of these you can also start to comboing off lastly gravekeeper's trap uh, is just mainly there to like to make sure you have a issue monster on your hand every turn something you can do is like you can discard any card to search off our Agido or Kelbeck and then back to your own turn you can discard again and search for another Ijiju monster and then by then you can you can trigger off their effects to start milling and not to mention the before your opponents draw you get to declare a card name and if you got it right the card has to send to the grave it's not easy to call it out right but you the information you had for seeing it is is quite powerful last effects is irrelevant in my deck because I'm not playing essential of the spirit and why I'm not playing a of the Spirit because uh, I think it's kind of like a brick. You need to have this on the field and so extreme of the Spirit in your grave in order to have that lockdown effects. But actually for graveyard interruptions, I can always rely on two of these. I think it's sufficient enough. And also, I think for certain matchups like Splike or Exorcister, they don't even bother you locking their graveyard. So I don't recommend you guys to play extreme of the Spirit. It's just not that easy to pull off, especially in the mirror match when your opponents can shuffle it back, shuffle back the extra of the spirit before you even activate this. So that's just my two cent. Not to mention, I'm actually considering of dropping this card, but uh, it's still a cool card to have in your deck to like fetch off your your Ichijo monster every turn. Although it doesn't plus one, but some cool plays every turn you can like search off a either Mudora and Keldo and then you ditch all from the flowing turns it's like every turn you have a graveyard interruptions in your grave that alone could be devastating for some decks so uh, this is the main deck and uh, I go through some tips after the deck profile be sure to watch until the end uh, let's go right into the extra deck alright for the extra deck starting off with the future monster so we are playing Terramon so obviously we have to play Kikalos and also uh, play Doha. Actually, you just need one because because you can always shuffle it back either by Tyrman's effects or even Ichiju cards because of the Port of Avery's effects. When the Crystalila archetype drops, uh, you definitely want to play at least two because Crystalila Unicorn can banish off your Kikalos, which is pretty bad for you. Credo Heart, just being Credo Heart, uh, a great interruptions. That's why I emphasize you want to mill off during your opponent's turn because you want to future summon into Credo Heart and that way you can bounce uh, some cards back to the deck and then to Breda Pran Deco Stipulia again I think you only need one but before the release of the new Tyrman's Fusion Monster in the upcoming booster box uh, I think you have to play two because you can always pull it off this is kind of like your main interruptions the easiest to go into due to the fact that Kika Loss and one Tyrman's Monster get, get, go into this so you can make one on your turn and uh, another one during your opponent's turn, which is nice. And then the last two fusion monsters was Antis and Winda. Antis just being Antis, uh, Winda, you know what it does. And then for the Axis monster, I'm playing four, which is uh, Baguska, or uh, Abyss Dweller, Time Thief Redual, and Juice. This, this is why this deck doesn't lose us to Dimensional Burial because you can always go into Axis Play or Synchro uh, Baguska is mainly to stall in case your opponent drops Dimension Shifter or even cards like uh, Hero Dark Law turn their monster into different positions and over the next turn you can uh, attack over it Abyss Dweller is just uh, it's broken in the mirror match you always want to go into this because it just shut down your turn you can even make it on your own turns before you start milling keep in mind this monster with rhino heart as a material it gains a 500 attacks which is nice and then time thing redual the very versatile but sometimes it depends on what you grab from your opponent's top deck but to be able to overlay 
into this with Shelin means you can trigger off Shelin's uh, fusion effects and then lastly you want juice just because you want to have some non-targeting removal and then for the links I'm playing one Nightmare Phoenix one Spike Elf and one Dark Charmer for Nightmare Phoenix uh, just a generic background removal especially when your opponents uh, open up with Macrocosmo Dimension of Fijil or even the Gravekeeper's Trap with Exchange of the Spirit in their grave and sometimes you can you can trigger off the your Ichijo monster with, by discarding them through Phoenix effects Spark Elf discard over perform every time you can either spell summon Meru or Diviner and most importantly is either player's turn and and it grants the monster it points to immune to targeting which is nice so you don't lose us to cards like ultimate slay and it's very easy to go into this you can always like normal or spell summon meru and then together with another monster you link into this or sometimes uh sometimes you can also go into dark charmer first and then you revive back a monster and then you link away dark charmer and that monster into spike elf that's why i think her uh, dark charmer is another essential monster i would say to have it in your extra deck you can opt to go for the earth charmer as well if there's more ishiju decks in your locals but dark is the most generic one i would say the mention sometimes wants to link away the monster i grab from triple tactics and lastly one burner the flu this is also another card that overperform one implication is that you can even pop your own cards to trigger off their effects so this is nice and sometimes when you use up its negations during your opponent's standby phase you can like send it back to the extra deck and then just summon the diviner from your grave and then start to combo off again or uh, omni negate is always nice and then when the new booster drops uh, i'm probably cutting one of these to the new fusion monster because the fusion monster requires kikalos and also one tyrannous monster so if you shuffle, shuffle back kikalos you can't go into this so that's it for the extra deck yeah i think the current situation is that there's not much of a fusion monster you can go into because as i mentioned earlier we are over milling most of the time and then not knowing what should i like fusion into so you have to plan out carefully every time you trying to re activate your tyrannous and issue monster effects all right some extra bonus right here these are the cards which i didn't play but i think it's uh it's great to have it uh, if you could find a space for it uh first off is the game sale it's nice uh, the fact that it's a aqua monster so you can fusion summons your into your tyrannous monster with this but i'm not playing it because it just like remove one monster which is not that great uh, lava golem uh, this is also a great card to have it in your side deck because it gets of two monster uh, but the reason i'm not playing it because i have the space for regeki so but i might add it back in if like juking alpha is underperformed and then Fairy Snow is also a pretty great card but due to the fact that I'm only playing like 42 cards and sometimes uh, cards need to be shuffled back if there's more Splike uh, I might include this in and then uh, this cat right here uh, when it's being sent to the grave during your opponent's turn by your opponent's card's effects it directly ends your opponent's turn means that uh, your opponents directly go into the end phase it is quite annoying for your opponents if they are playing Ichiju because you can always shuffle it back and then have them to think twice before they start milling right. instant fusion this one card starter is nice but to be able to only go into Gikalos is not so appealing to me I might add it back in when the new fusion monster release uh, last time I tend to play this uh, together with Mud Dragon of the Swarm in my extra deck so that Instead of Kikalos, I can also go into Mudragon and overlay uh, into rank 4. Uh, let's get right into tips. Alright, starting off with the Ishiju monster. Alright, tip number 1. Because they tend to spread summon themselves, so you always wanna like, especially going second, like if you open and drop a maxi or any hand traps, you have to consider right on the spot whether you want to uh, spread summon 
right after that because all of the monster could uh, help you out on OTKing your opponents. So if you miss it, you miss it. You will you lack of your monster. And also for Mudora and Keldor, uh, keep in mind that they can activate even uh, on the field. <coughs> so if you ever got like, shut down by Grief Keeper's Traps, you always can normal summon that and then activate the effect to shuffle back the exchange of the spirit at your opponent's graveyard. And then sometimes like through overmilling, you have like multiple copies of this. In the case you have like two copy of Kaldo and one copy of Mudora. Before you end your turn, you can like activate one of it first, since they are like once they are only like once per turn. So during all turns, you can like shuffling back some of, uh, some of these first, so that uh, when you start milling at your opponent's turn, you have a higher chance of hitting any of these, and then you 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 can mill more. And also, uh, since the vinyl uh, allows you to uh, mill off any of these, to decide whether to mill off or uh, any of these is also. It also requires some thought process before you actually decide uh, which one to mill depending on uh, what you already have in your grave like for example uh, during your last turn you already have two of these in your grave and then uh, on your own turn you just like num summon you obviously you would like to selectively uh, mill off this and then treat to start mill off so that uh, you can hit uh, you can hit agido and then uh, mill another five uh, you know what I'm talking about, it's just uh, you need to think of the probability every time you make a decision. Uh, same goes to Mudora and Keldo, you want to shuffle back uh, these before you start milling. Alright, for the Terramon's cards, I think I've covered quite many things uh, on my previous deck profile. Yeah, it's also the game of probability. If you can selectively to mill off something of Rhino Heart, uh, you choose to mill something that is, has the higher count in your grave so that you have a higher chance of uh, mill hitting others others tyrannous monster on the flowing mills in the mirror match you will choose not to activate Kelbeck or Agido because uh, your opponent might mill better than you and uh, you just you will screw up from there so what you can do is like uh, you go into Kika Loss and then search off Meru and then uh, target you call itself to spell summon Meru and then it's being sent to the grave changing 1 and 2 you get a mirror a total of 8 even if it's not uh, in the mirror match you always want to go into this play because you want to have a level 2 on your field so that you can go into Splite Elf which uh, provides you like immune to targeting and also you can even revive back Diviner and so keep in mind that uh, every time your Terminus monster is being suffered back to the deck, you get to pop a card. It doesn't necessarily have to be their own effects. You can also trigger it uh, through, uh, through this to shuffle back uh, your own Terminus monster in your grave and then pop a card. Yeah, I highly recommend you guys to go through my first deck profile on the branded Terminus before watching this or, or even after watching this because you can have an insight of uh, like how this deck has been evolved from back and then uh, so i have covered some tips over there which i not I'm not uh, i'm not going to mention it over again over here so that's it for the deck profile uh hope you guys get a couple of takeaways i know it's uh it's, you know, this could be a very quite a long video but uh because there's so much to talk about if you guys are uh, into decks like do a bunch of decision making uh definitely pick this up to burn off some of, some of your brain cells uh, jokes apart i think this is a kind of like a revolutionary deck which uh, konami have never uh, released such kind of effects before and it certainly shut down a lot for drug decks uh, rest in peace some of those grave centric decks yeah it's definitely worth getting hit because it's just uh, kind of degenerate especially the ichiju cards so let me know down in the comment section below on uh, your thoughts about this deck or if you have any other like spicy tech you wanna share with me and also other viewers. And once again, uh, sorry for being not uploading uh, for the past month. And uh, catch you guys in the next video. This is Ethan signing out. Bye.